right, so I will start recording now. All right, so I have Evan McCary and Daniel O'Reilly here from USTU Fitness. How's it going, lads? How are you? All good, thanks for having us. Oh, no bother at all, no bother at all. How are you enjoying quarantine? You can go, Dan, you can answer that one. <laughs> well, it's been, it's had, like, obviously it's not great being stuck, like, in a certain location, like, but you can maximise it. Like, we're trying to, obviously, broadcast ourselves and trying to get, obviously, workouts out there, but different info and try to be different to everybody else as well, like, spread good knowledge of not just fitness and nutrition, but how to live your life, especially during now, because people like kind of lose the run of themselves and they lack structure. So yeah. like myself and Evan are just trying to help as much people out as we can. And like at the moment, you've seen a lot of the same things, like people are putting up live workouts, which is great. Like but you kind of want to be a bit different, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's my thought on it anyway. Yeah, it's tough. Like it really is tough. Like even me, I own a business and coaching kids sports and it's like, I'm looking at my social media following and I'm looking at all these things, comparing it to other big gyms, say who have done giveaways, me and everyone were talking about there a few minutes ago. And it's like, how can I do a giveaway that can make my business grow massive on social media and stuff? But it's like, if it's not unique and it's not different, it's not really going to do that well. And you can see with that alpha gym, I can't remember where they were based, but it was yeah. a gym. Yeah. They did, and they started selling equipment, well, not selling equipment, giving it away. And they said they were going to take it back and then all of a sudden, everyone started copying them. And then they turned it on all those other companies and businesses were saying, actually, no, we're not going to take it back now. So then they just they just played double-handed on the other businesses. They absolutely calmed them. So it's like, oh, yeah. you tried to copy us. Now we're going to turn it back on you. So it's like... <laughs> but how many people are they going to get in the door now after this stuff? Like, that'll pay for that equipment. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. 100%. So, like, for them, like, I, I actually seen they put up a post and it was like, we we gained like ten thousand followers in a day, mm. like that. That's huge, like for like an Irish business, like in a day. Yeah. So it's they're like, obviously yeah. gonna help in turn that it'll bring more revenue into the door and also be, faces. Yeah, like, like, I think during this time though, with like the quarantine and stuff, it's people are gonna be thinking now. Right? Can I sell online consultations, online programs, and that's where maybe that following would be great. Obviously, you're not going to have all these 200,000 people walking in the door, but it's mm. like if you're getting 10% of them to buy a program or to buy some sort of online mm. product or a consultation, you're not doing bad. Yeah. Even 5% of that, like if yeah, you're 10,000 people, you know? Sorry, sorry to put in. I think that, like, I've been watching a lot of lives, like just dipping in and out, just to kind of one for ideas and two, just to see where myself and Evan are at, like, you know? Um, and what I've noticed is that the quality of the viewers compared to the follower count is massive. Like, so if you have someone like I was on one yesterday and they'd sick, I'm not going to say who or what, but they'd 60,000 followers and there were 60 people watching the video. This is halfway yeah. through the video. Do you know what I mean? So like say if myself and Evan were to do a video and there was 30 or 40 people at the moment, then you compared to our following ratio, like 30 or 40 people that are clued in that are there for what we do, then we're happy with that. You're never going to get 800, 900 people when you have mm. just over a thousand followers do you know what i mean so yeah. um like you said about getting people in the door like if you can get five percent ten percent build up for, of say program sales or online coaching and stuff like that then you're doing great compared to having 50 60 000 followers and like you're not getting much out of that like do you know what i mean yeah yeah no like it's this has been really, really tough, I know, for me because I'm a get up and go type of person. I really, my social media, I don't focus on at all. I focus on how I deal with people face to face. That's my strong point. And I think, to be honest, that's going to make a difference between a lot of businesses after this quarantine because people are going to, I think they're going to be so focused on social media and on their websites and on all this. And people are going to totally forget about the fact that their people skills is going to be it's most important at the end of the day especially mm -hmm. in, in both your line of work like it's so so important and um, but realistically it's like <sighs> what they did in terms of the first company who were giving away all that equipment it was unique but you can see that there's a total lack of creativity and imagination with basically everyone else that copied them you know just jump on it they jump on they it jump and see that it. it's good yeah. and then it's like, it's like people that like, it, like social, like social media is a massive thing. Me and Dan have spoke about this 
over and over again. It's mm. massive to any business, I think. Um, and especially if you have a big enough following that you can get loads of people to share your stuff and have mm. loads of new followers every week. It's massive. And it's massive to revenue in a company as well. Mm. But yeah. again, just for, like if you go through a lot of people's Instagrams, it's kind of all the same stuff when you look at it. Yeah. Um, and then that's where I think me and Dan try to do things a little bit different. Um, like I think our training style is a little bit different to what other people's would be. Um, I don't know if he would agree. I just I'd never asked him that. Um, but if he's coming, yeah, you're coming to the dark side. He's coming to my type of training I now. Think, uh, I think it's just dabbling in, in, like for us, it's dabbling in a bit of everything. Like it's just to kind of give like people a different, like we said, different aspect of training. Like it doesn't mean that you have to, like Evan, go and do handstand walks. It just means that like you can approach training in different ways and make it more enjoyable. And I know there is other trainers that I know and speak to a lot that kind of have the same approach as me and Evan. So like, it's not all a, a big uh, competitive market. Like you do rub off for the trainers to see what they're doing. Like, but um, yeah, I think it's good to, to definitely rub off people and then bring that into your own training. Because you're only going to grow then, aren't you? Like, yeah, well, for me, I think it's important not to individualize or to individualize. Sorry, it's very important to individualize. Like, obviously, everyone's different, they have different training, achieve like goals and whatever. But, like, I don't know how many times now I've seen like these free, like, home online workouts and like on Instagram. And as you said, like, there could be pages, say, with 60,000 people, and then there's 60 people watching, and it's like. Obviously, I'm, I'm massive on giving stuff away for free. Like, I've written a book and I've like I've printed a thousand in the first run, and I've given away five hundred free, just purely to get my name out there. But it's like, I just think that the industry is so watered down, you know, with, with PTs and different yeah. businesses. Like, it's really, really watered down. And if, like, qualifications don't even have to be a necessity anymore. Like, people can have a six pack and look in decent enough, like Nick. And just put, say, for example, David Newton Fitness as their name on Instagram, and all of a sudden they're mm. PT. I've just as much right yeah. as you, and that's that's the unfortunate truth, you know. Um, so that's where like I'd be looking at you as and um, I love Evs type of like it's CrossFit Ev that you do, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, like it's it's serious training and like it's some Nick. But then Dan, what's your main avenue of training? Like, what would you focus on? Um. Well, I play football, so it would obviously be geared towards that. So it'd be a lot of, well, recently it'd be a lot of like power work and um, kind of elements of CrossFit. Like I did CrossFit in the off season. I still do bits and bobs now, but it's hard with the load when you're actually football training. So um, it'd be more like explosive stuff that I do. And then obviously, like obviously you want to look good. So you do bits and bobs, like um, a lot of body weight stuff. I kind of moved away from like, beach weights if you want to call them and kind of move towards stuff that'll actually improve me in football but mm -hmm. also I'm like seeing Evan doing handstand or seeing other people being doing muscle ups or whatever like it's kind of an incentive to go right let's see if you can do that you know that kind of way so. yeah 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 like it's it's I have to have followed your page I think it's brilliant and it's super to see people with initiative and try and take that next step and for me as well it's like I, I obviously I qualified with a sports science degree and it's like I did that course and I went what can I apply not in a bad way like I loved my degree and everything I'm delighted I got the qualification but what can I apply to setting up a business and I was like I don't have a clue I was like mm. all right I know I'm going to coach some kids I have done it for years and that's why I, I just enjoy it and it's my go-to but I was going okay so what do I take from this degree and I was lucky to kind of focus on fundamental movement skills say in children that was my go-to for my business that's what I was going to focus on but what made like there was other people running say kids academies and for various sports and maybe just for football and Gaelic football but what made me different was writing a book and it's like for me when I'm looking like there's so many PTs so many different people trying to set their own Instagram pages it's like I'm trying to say right what can make say the likes of yourselves different and like do you have an idea of that or are you just trying to keep it just keep it going and see what happens or do you have a goal for it you know like, but, uh, we'll that's a good question yeah because yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll answer it and then and then Dan can answer it or we can do it away right it doesn't, it doesn't really matter and um, personally 
like what you're talking about there, anyone can become a PT within like six weeks. Yeah. Now there's no there's nothing wrong with that. But I think that that's where like the market becomes a little bit watered down. And what we were speaking about before Dan came on, um, as in like people them types of people will charge say thirty quid and people will go, Oh, that's cheaper, we'll we'll go with him. Whereas someone might say me and Dan might charge fifty, for example, for a programme. And people are like, nah, no, I'll just go with the cheaper one. But me and Dan, like, Dan's been around longer than I have. He's a little bit older than me. And he has a little bit more experience in, in that field as well. And um, his knowledge... Still learning. Still learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, 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 his knowledge is is, is quite, like, is, is amazing. And um, when it comes to little, like, little finicky things, he's quite good at, just, like, figuring things out. And... Um, and like I've I learned a lot from that, um, but like me and Dan are in the same college course. That's how we got to know each other. But I think that like those little things you learn in college are the things that will separate you from other people, and mm. um, not just someone that does a six week personal training. There's nothing wrong with that. We've all done it. But I think if you if you want to go to the next level, that's where that's where like the work is actually going is when you, you step foot into college and you have to like actually work and you, you work about, and about how the body actually works, not just mm, yeah. like this, this does this. If you want to get bigger, you do this. And um, mm. you need to learn about all this, all the systems in your body and stuff. Um, and I think that's where the pricing program is different because it's not just the training program. Mm. It's like also, a... It's like um, like we don't really like Evan said we don't like class as a program. It's more a service. Do you know what I mean? So, like we'd rather have say for example like eight people. Like we've eight people on board. Say we have eight people on board at the moment compared to thirty people where we're sending out more generic stuff. But with eight people, we'd rather have a better rapport with them so we can interact and help them get the results. Like obviously you see people and they just want results. Um, PTs, they want to see the results of before and after. They put it up and they go, grant, hopefully we'll get some revenue in from other people from that. But what we'd, we'd rather do is help people change for the long run. Like um, we had a girl um, and she she trained before, like she did swimming, Ema, Evan, but um, mm. she she uh, we kind of got her back on track with training and she did a 12-week kind of stint with us. But after that, like she she kind of picked up on what we gave her and like we were constantly talking to her every week, sometimes twice a week. And then after that, she had more of a structure to her life, how she was training, her nutrition. And she kind of sustained that. Whereas other people would go, right, six, eight weeks, you get your results. Where, where do I go from there? Do you know what I mean? So like, it's anyone, a lifestyle like, change. Yeah. 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 That, we're tr- that we're trying to give people and not a lifestyle change to be someone that can like dance it, like do muscle ups or handstand walks. It's not that like it's, it's just to get people healthy and well. Because um, even if you're healthy and well, you don't need to look as, mm. like, you don't need to look like you go to the gym yeah. to be healthy and well. Yeah. Yeah, but in the thing. long term, it yeah. will help in every aspect of life. When you get older, it'll help, like, especially in this, like, this scenario we're in now, it'll help be a fight against, like, if you were to catch the coronavirus, like, yeah, it, also it, it will just help. Demons in your own head. You know, exactly. You yeah, yeah. Do, you have something to go and work towards, and like that's so important. But it's like I know you were saying, Dan, that I know there was um certain workouts, and say these followings have sixty thousand people, and only sixty were watching. But it's like it's funny because them say, well, first of all, they could have bought followers. I think that's something else that we need to talk about. Like a, a lot of these, oh, companies, yeah, a lot of these people are doing that, and <laughs> like do it. I don't like I don't care like but yeah. it's funny because people will see a page with say 2,000 followers or whatever and see 60,000 and you know which one they're probably going to follow you know um, but the thing is with, with I don't, I'm, like I'm guilty of this myself people I look at certain people who have a better body and I won't even look at their knowledge I'm guilty of it and I'll go oh shit they must yeah. know what they're talking about and if I'm doing that someone and it's stupid of me who has a sports science degree <laughs> guarantee you the average job was doing it you know and that's mm. that's so annoying it really is annoying i can only imagine how frustrating it is for people like yourselves because it's like you have the knowledge you are putting in the work yeah 
someone else who just might have a better following because they have a better body will get more attention, you know, which is rough. Yeah. It's really, really rough. But I totally agree with like, yeah, it's all about lifestyle. Like I know I am in no way an athlete at all, but I have to do like an exercise dependent. Like I have to do at least an hour of exercise a day or else I'll, I'll just lose. I won't be able to do anything else. I'm like, I have to do something. I have to do something. I have to go on a walk. I have to do a run. I have to lift weights. Something. Go on the, like, yeah. It's, like, Anything. Even for your that's, mental, even for your yeah. mental, yeah, yeah, clarity, like you know, that's all it is for my mental health, or else, like, I will mm. just drive myself mad the whole day, like, and that's just me being picky. But other people don't realize how much exercise will actually help them, you know, yeah, no, that's Crazy. just like people, it's great to, like, you said there, like, to like, if you see someone who looks in shape, you automatically think they know they know their stuff, like, yeah, they might know their own body to train themselves, but. They might not know how to train somebody else. Like a lot, I know a lot of top coaches. Like, and you look at them and you go, "He doesn't train them, but gee, like the knowledge they have is like unbelievable. Like, like they mightn't necessarily have time to train, or I don't know, other things come into to play. Like, but their knowledge is unbelievable. So I don't think that's at the top end of things. I don't think that's a real priority to have a six pack or whatever like that. It's more so how you can spread your knowledge to or say if I spread it to Evan and he wanted to become fast or stronger it doesn't matter what I look like but if I know the knowledge and I can put it into play and develop results then it doesn't really matter like you know I wish people would think about that more you know it's a different thing knowing the knowledge and then being able to apply the knowledge yeah like yeah. loads of people could sit there and say oh, yeah, I know how to do that but they wouldn't know how to do that mm. like and getting that across to people is hard like someone will just say ah oh. someone might say I, w- I want to become fast. Okay. <laughs> people, some might, some might just say, all right, squat, squat heavy. Mm. Whereas then other types of people will teach like running mechanics and stuff like that, yeah. which will in turn then make them quicker. Yeah. Um, yeah. But people will just say, all right, squat heavy, I'll get quicker. Yeah. No substance so, to it. No substance to it at all. No, it, it's a quick fix. And like, I hate seeing things go up, like lose weight in six weeks. Like, I hate it. It's just, it's hate just it. Get a six pack like, in six weeks. Yeah. Just don't eat and don't drink water. You'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Like that's but this is the thing. It's like it's just marketing and then people will try anything to get more, you know, more customers, more clients. Um and it's just it's really tough. And that's what the, I just keep on looking at people like and I have certain friends as a friend of mine, Katrina, and she'd see herself as more of like a health and well being type of influencer on Instagram. And she she reached ten thousand followers there the other day, but she was talking about how it's like people will buy followers and then yeah they don't really, like and she whatever like she doesn't have any qualifications she wants to become a pt but i was kind of saying yeah and i do appreciate the fact that like she's pictures up on her instagram of her showing what she did look like and what she looks like now what she did to change that i understand like that's great experience and it's super and she's doing really well but other people will just put up pictures and obviously they'll change their image on it they can do certain stances and all but maybe if they just look better than it even though they're not applying their captions there and as informative or anything they're going to stand out better you know just because maybe their yeah. butt's looking better or something it's something simple as that mm. you know and it's just so watered down um but for you is predominantly do you do work online or is just providing the programs or is actually one-to-one coaching in a certain location all online isn't it yeah, it's all, it's, but like it's not sent to like a spreadsheet. It's done on an app, so it's good. Like, cause it gives vi- like videos of the exercises, and it oh, allows, yeah. it allows them like them if they need to contact us, they can message us on the app, or they can, they can email like email us or text us on Instagram. Right. Um, I and mean, then like Dan kind of said earlier, we never really take on a huge group of people, um, because we want to have like a, a relationship kind of with with the person who you're coaching and um, because I think if, if you're just like a number or a digit to to that like to say to the coaches mm-hmm. they're not going to put in the, the effort like whereas we kind of make the people accountable like we check up on them and um, how are you getting on what do you think it is and like so most of the time if you say we do 12 weeks you get a lot of people that might be like oh it's hard as a start but then come the end of the 12 weeks they love yeah. it like yeah. and a, a, like a I think doing it on an app is just, just easier for people because they can just get it on their phone. Yeah. They, they could just do whatever. I don't know what, um, like, like that girl Dan was talking about, she's 
she seems to love training now. See after her, like she, I think she fell off the bandwagon a little bit, but I think she's she loves training now. Yeah. Um, the personalization but, of it is really key. It really is. Like it has to be individualized to the person. But like I yeah. think that's definitely the way to go is to say do it in groups of four. But it's like if you and Dan say had four people each, it's like can you only you know reach eight people, or should you think you should start taking on other people with similar goals like yourselves and similar knowledge who can take on another four people and have maybe more employees, you know, and maybe give them mm. a percentage yeah. then, and you take the rest. I think that would be that would be great for you, you know, just to not to limit yourselves in terms of your own revenue and your own income. Yeah. Um we haven't talked about that yet, I don't think. Yeah. Um yeah. but it's not it's a it's a good it's obviously you wanna always look to the future and kind of yeah. set goals and then try like if you have more people on board like you're only going to do better if if the demand is there you know but like you said earlier referring back to that on like people skills like that doesn't mean that like we're just doing this at the moment obviously it's busy now at the moment with everything going on but like aside from that we have other stuff to do during the day like um so it's not just about being online whereas a lot of people would just prioritize themselves online um, whereas we do it we do our day to day stuff as well. So that those people skills never like the importance of them is so so important, like, you know, um dealing with people, like especially after this, I think people will will forget what it's like to have a conversation in regards to like whatever business they're in. Like, you know, if you're coaching people, I'm sure you want to still have that rapport with whether it's the kids or the parents and stuff like that, just because you're on the phone or texting, like doesn't mean you you veer away from those one to one skills. Oh yeah, no, yeah, and it's it's like the importance of people skills has made my business grow. Like just for me personally, I know I'm good at people, and it's not. I'm just I just am. I just know I am. I've had forty one first cousins, like on my mum's side. My mum owned a play school. Obviously, I was in McDowell's with you, Ev, and like just I come mm. across so many people. So I'm just used to being around so many different types of people. But it's like if I wasn't so good, I'd say the minute a parent walks in the door, oh, hi, what's your name? Oh, hi, what's your son's name? Nice to meet you. Oh, you have cool shoes. Can I borrow them? And the child looks at you and laughs. And, oh, you're not going to wear my shoes. But it's like all these little tricks and like meeting people like, oh, I asked them how their weekend was, like how was their whatever, their day, their mates in the pubs. Stuff like that is what makes it different. Like you have to be knowledgeable, I know, and it's very important and well qualified and be able to like pass on your knowledge to other people. But, making them feel like they're part of something is just as important. Mm. What do you think? Well, if that's your strong point, like I always say, like when I was younger, they always say, oh yeah, improve your weaknesses, which is important. Like, but if you've got strengths, you need to make them strengths stick out. Like, you know, yeah, like if you're, if you're, if yeah. you're, no, if you're a good people person, don't all of a sudden leave that and start doing stuff online. Then like your strength goes down. All of a sudden you're kind of him and on, you know? So, um, yeah. I think that's so important, especially when you have something that you're good at. Like I'd be saying that to you in regards to people. Like I think making people feel wanted and um, like they're important um, is important in your line of business, but also our line of business in gyms. Um, like you need to you need to make people feel like they want to be there. That it's not just another person coming in and out the door. Like you know. Yeah, dead right. But then again, like it is very important to hone down on your skills. But a time like this is the perfect time to work on your online business and your social media. It really is, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's it's funny, like it's <laughs> I'm trying, as I said, like yourselves, I'm trying to be unique and different. And I am happy that I do have a book that I've written to be able to kind of push out there and you know give it away for free to people. But are you giving away any like online programs for free at this stage or any consultations for free or uh, yes, we will be. Um, yeah. like we we gave out um, it was just like a free online just body weight workouts. Do it like people we just made it on the Google Sheet so we could just add people onto it. They could do what they want. Um, they could follow it. They don't have to follow it. It's up to them. And um, there was a good chunk of people who went on that. Um, and then one thing that we were thinking about doing was maybe like giveaways and stuff. That's what like. I think that's how you need to grow things. You need to like put yourself out there, and people then like it, if someone gave me something for free, I'd probably do it. And mm. um, 
Because it's free. It's more so like the reason behind why you'd give away. Do you know what I mean? So say if we're giving away yeah, like, like a protein bar or something like that. But you wanna you want people like people of course if you've seen protein bars or loads of stuff like you'd want it, but like there has to be something there that's gonna benefit us as well. Like not just about followers, but if someone does a program with us then and all of a sudden they go, Oh yeah, they're actually really good. Like I got the bars and whatever, but like Jesus, like my training's changed now. Like, you know what I mean? So you, you has to be a purpose behind the giveaway, not just giving away gym equipment and trying to like be the same as everyone else. Like like you said, the others doubling up, then all of a sudden like the people that are alone in equipment look a bit stupid, like, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I also I just seen someone there actually. It was clever of them. I think they spent five hundred euro on a gym shark voucher, and then they were putting it up saying, you know, this is a giveaway and like like that as well. I was like, oh, that was clever, but it's different, you know. And that's that's something that will work out very well, I think. But like they kind of, I say they looked at it and they went, oh, there's no point doing this because everyone else is doing it. So what can we do, you know? And that was obviously yeah, clever as well. Um, but I think like it's just if you can avoid you know, spending 500 euro to do a giveaway to just gain maybe, as you said, like 200,000 followers and 90% of them. Well, I, wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind 200,000. Yeah. I wouldn't know either. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't know either. Well, like I would be complaining about 500 quid, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, hey, like, right now. I was looking at their page and it's already dropping off. I think they're from 220 to 209 already. So, yeah, yeah okay. so it's, it's dropping. People got a bit know? ratty because they didn't win. Yeah, like and you hours. follow and then you unfollow, don't you? Like, you yeah, do. but yeah. like we were all guilty. All three of us were guilty of sharing all them posts that were put up for giveaways. Yeah, but the more you see it, like, it's, like the first one you see that outcome, you go, oh, that's unreal. Then the next I think one everyone had that kind of going, like, yeah, and then yeah. you're going through your following, you're going, like, do I really need to follow these? Like, they're up in wherever, like, cavern or something, like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, what's the point? <laughs> But it was just sick that yeah. you know, like the other one, great. The next one, oh, that's cool as well. Then it's like a third one, a fourth one, a fifth one, a sixth. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, what? Seriously? But it was just, it was also the fact that it was word for word the exact same. Mm. Yeah, you know? they must have just copy and pasted it or something. Like, as I said, like, fair play to, like, to the alpha crowd who did it. It was, a fuck, it was genius. Absolutely genius. And the fact then to go and not take it back after the ground is, is brilliant yeah. as well. They noticed that, and, like, it's genius marketing, but, like, for the other crowds, I was like, a bit of originality, just be, <laughs> just be different. Like, you had to yeah. you know, just copying them word for word, you know? Yeah. I think, I think that was, like, not, I wouldn't say small gyms, because they're not small, but away from your, like, commercial gyms, there, I think, if anyone is looking to go somewhere, go to somewhere like that. Yeah. Because um, you, you'll have, like, a, a rapport with the coach, yeah. So, like, you'd be in a class, and might only, you might only be there for the hour, but you're actually going to do a bit of work for like for the hour. Like they're going to take you through everything, and um, because like we've all been in in the commercial gyms, um, and it can be a bit a bit t- a bit scary sometimes when you don't know what to do. Oh yeah, and you can see, you can see it on people's faces that like, Jesus, I, I don't know if I'm doing this right, but if you're in a class, there might only be twenty people in that class that coach will get to know you, you'll get to know other people as well. So you're also going to build build a friendship. Um, so like if someone asked me, where would you recommend going? I would 100% push them down the route of a, like a, kind of a community gym. Yeah. Um, or either like a CrossFit gym or like that, that, that sort of gym. Just because of the relationships you'll build in there. And amazing. Like from the moment I walked into where, I started CrossFit. People are just brilliantly, um, and then where I went on then to coach, where I still am. Again, basically the exact same people, just in different gyms. It's mad when you, when you go around them. And I, oh, I'd say, I think Dan was in CrossFit Leech Slip, right? Uh, Selbridge. Well, yeah, Selbridge. Yeah. I'd say it'd be the same if you went in there as well. They just make yeah. you feel welcome. And they make you want to come back then. I know that for a fact because my friend, she's in my course, Michaela Gill. She owns now, she's after taking over a uh, next generation now, I think it is. It's down until there somewhere. Next gen crossfit or something. I can't remember her name. I'll give her a shout out now in a few minutes. I'll look it up. But like that. Has she got any equipment? I'd say so. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say lots of it. <laughs> but uh, like that as well. I see all the people that. 
put up posts about the business and brilliant and it's absolutely brilliant but they're all i know a few of them and they're in their late 40s and stuff and i was going jesus these are just parents like doing crossfit like i'd be thinking they just yeah. walk a day you know and mm. they love it you know they absolutely love it down there i can see it from all her posts and from their own posts and it's great to see you know and i think a lot of people it's, are doing crossfit you know i think it's big it's because it's so like to everyday life and um, like as in they get like the functionality of it is so, like the crossover from like going to work standing above a chair to like doing doing a squat or whatever is the like an air squat is the same and it can be changed for for everybody it's mm. like you don't have you do crossfit you don't have the back squat like 150 kilos you can just air squat yeah because it's yeah. still going to give that person the same stimulus that they need to to feel like that individuality better. isn't it like yeah yeah like it does we've all like especially me and dan like we've been there when you go into your first crossfit gym and you're like oh it's handstand push-ups and power muscle ups you're like can't do either of them things and he's like oh yeah, yeah. but you can just go off a box and then we'll do like we'll change the power muscle ups you're like all right grand but you're still feeling the same way Oh, yeah. As the person who has done the handstand push ups and the bar muscle ups, because yeah, it's and, yeah. and new like, to you, like there's nothing worse than being afraid going into a gym. Like, my biggest fear to this day was walking into a jiu jitsu gym, and I just I was like, This is going to be bad, this is going to be so bad. I was like, I'm going to get choked unconscious, I'm going to get my arm broken, it's going to be terrible. And I walked in and I was like, is people not trying to kill me? What's going on here? Everyone giving you like high fives and hugs. You had you met them before? What's yeah. the story? What's your name? One day I'll show you something. You're like, oh, this is actually all right. They're not all weird, all bleeding all over each other and trying to kill each other. And it's like getting over that original fear is just so important. Just to do it. Just do it. The teacher and I ask you, yeah. you can used to always say that, just do it. And it, it, it's just something, you just have to have that little edge about you to just go, right, I'm going to try it. Fuck it. You know, it's just, I may as well. But it, that's you have tough to for do people. It. Just, it's tough it's for like people. It's like pulling you know? a, a plaster off, isn't it? You just have yeah. to go in. And, yeah, well, that's and, it. And, you know? and do it like. But for people like us, say, who are all involved in sport from an early age, I think that's not a problem. Like, whatever, I was like, oh, this is nerve wracking, especially when it's people. But, literally choking you and breaking your limbs like yeah like, oh this is just gonna be rough but i'm so interested in doing it but i was able to step over and us playing sports i know you played football Ev, and obviously dan you did too like it's not too hard for us to get over that to go and try something new because we've done it already from kids but for people maybe yeah. who haven't been embedded in any sort of physical activity from basically that young it could be it could be hard for them you know i think that's that's one mm. massive point you know and then there's just people who, who hate going into a new environment. Yeah. Like, yeah. they just, they're, they're socially not able to, to deal with, like, new people, which, like, I know plenty of people that are like that as well. Um, but I think you just need to go in. Just, no matter what it is, just go and do it. But it's also, like, Cause, like it build your mental after a couple After a couple of weeks, you're going to be like, Yeah, you don't feel like, why was I worrying? Yeah, yeah you're just going to be like, oh, these are, these are normal. Yeah. Well, but build your confidence it's normal, like it's it's unbelievable even if you're just going in to just get an hour's workout break a small sweat that's fine but one thing that will definitely improve is your own confidence you know mm. that's something mm. people don't realize like it's just if that's the only thing that improved your own confidence you wouldn't be doing half bad would you yeah. you know no it's yeah that's it it's a hard thing to work on that isn't isn't it like your own confidence yeah, like, and it comes from just doing things, you know, like something I keep on talking about, it seems to be a, like a broken record in all these podcasts, but it's like, for me, goal setting is huge. If I don't set goals, I'll just, I won't do anything. And mm. obviously there's a difference then between setting your goals and actually going and doing them, you know? And like, for me, like the confidence comes in just doing them. whatever. I can go and set my goals all day long, but like if I set them and just sit there and then don't do anything different. I'm not going to gain any confidence. I'm not going to gain any They're dreams, then, aren't they? You yeah. Know? No, but I think it's the personal, like, it's the satisfaction of, like, say if you put it on a white bar and you get to rub it off and you're done. You're just like, I think a sense of achievement. You're like, oh, I have actually done that. But that's that's the other thing. It's like something I always do, and people are like, geez, you must be so stuck up your own arse. But it's, 
every month and I do it, I make sure to do it the last Sunday of every month, I write down all my achievements for the month that's just gone. Mm. And something so simple like that. And by the way, these achievements could be like whatever, like dropping in a loaf of bread to your next door neighbor. Like mm. I was made sure when I was told to do this to write down everything, everything you've done because we don't give ourselves enough credit, you know? Yeah. And obviously there's a difference, a fine line then between being stuck up your own arse and just being proud of your own achievements, you know? But something like yeah. that, like a small exercise can really give you a good boost, you know? Well, Especially you're on your own and your other work, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, like, like it, especially, especially for you. Sorry, cutting across you, but like, if you're on your own, like, and you do something, there's no one there to say, "Well done." Mm-hmm. Whereas, yeah. if like, when say if you're in the thing where there's more than one person, so me and Dan, you could turn around and say, "Oh, well done," or, or yeah. I didn't, like, so like, there's that, like, kind oh, of interaction yeah. there. But especially when you're working with yourself, there's not really a, there's no one really there to hold your hand and say, "Well done." Oh, yeah, so, like, I guess like the best way of getting compliments is just by customer feedback you know if you're doing your job good yeah. and tell you. but and then basically they won't tell you if you're doing good or not unless you ask you know so that's something i've made sure to do is to like every few weeks every few months is to just text them or email them all going look i hope you're enjoying the service but if there's anything i could be doing better let me know and, I'll, and most of the time mm. it's thank god it's all now you're doing great thanks so much you're providing the service it's where we love it but like there's no like if you get bad feedback i know it sounds bad i know it sounds mad but that's good as well because then you know you can improve on something you know yeah, yeah. um i think like no one else is, is good news as well personally i think if not like i think if there's something wrong someone will say to you hmm. but if there's nothing wrong no one will say well done and at the same time it's like <sighs> You you like to know. I like to know I'm doing good. Yeah, you know? I really do. Yeah, yeah, you know that that makes you want to keep on going. Personally, anyway. Um, but yeah, I think also there's, and this is something that a lot of people don't even consider is like, I know when I first started off, I was just coaching neurotypical kids, so kids without autism, people like me, mm-hmm. us three. And basically, then what I had done was I set up a survey like an online survey using survey monkey and what i did was i put up on facebook i was like look basically what do you want from me simple as that i was like what do you want me to do like i'll coach any type of class what do you want and numerous people were like oh you should do coaching for kids with autism or special needs and i was like okay i don't have the qualifications for that but i'll look into it and then I left it for months and then I went and I was talking to Paddy Hewlin. I don't know if you know. Um, and yeah. but he was his son has autism and he was like, You should think about doing it. Like it's amazing. Like you you do really well. And I did it and the next morning after I put a post on Facebook, I had three hundred people trying to sign up. So it's like Crazy. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to ask people what they want as well. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's simple mm. as that. I kind of I know it, people. Yeah, like it nearly seems desperate. I get that. Mm. But, like, oh, I just want. But they're probably they're probably scrolling through Google looking for something in their area, and there's nothing. And then you just came along and said, oh, "What do you want?" And they were like, "These, yeah. this must be a scam or something." Like they were probably thinking one of them on post messages you you get. Yeah, yeah. And um, but like, like yeah. obviously, if you, I think. If you give people too many options, they won't pick. Yes. They won't that's pick. That's also true. I think, I, think, I think people should have two options. And then two or three options and that's it. Because if there's more than three, you're not, you're not yourself, you're not going to pick. I mean, yeah. you go to read a menu, you spend yeah. 40 minutes trying to figure out what you want to eat. Yeah. No, you're dead right. You're dead so, right. I spend yeah. two, but I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the worst yeah, person to go and eat with. Like, um, no, but like, it's it's good that like you you're giving something back to people, like that you want to give back. It makes you feel good going coming out of work being like like I helped them today, and it's kind of the same for us. Um, because like you get people texting me going, oh, I lost X amount of weight or whatever, or yeah. I'm feeling better. It gives you kind of a a sense of of achievement being like, you like I made that person's life a little bit easier or or better. And um, it's good, like it's it's a good feeling. It's not as if you're ringing people saying, "Like we're gonna take your house off you." 
Oh yeah, well there you go. Like it's, it's, it could be doing that. Like it's customer feedback. Like, they're telling you that they're getting results. That's great for you, you know. And like yeah, and like in our like programs, we give every Sunday. I think it's every Sunday, isn't it? Is he there? Yeah, I know. It's a, yeah, yeah. It's every Sunday we send the the question out, isn't it? Every Sunday or Monday, yeah. I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So every Sunday or Monday it gets sent out, and um, it's just like, how was your week of training? How were you? How was it? Were you eating? Um, have you like you lost weight? Do you feel stronger? Um, and is there any feedback? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, but you're building a relationship with people. Yeah. Keeping trust. The point makes confidence. them feel like they want to be there. Yeah. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Um, I think what you have in terms of the app, is brilliant, and that's yeah that's your go-to that's your uniqueness because like i don't know obviously i don't want to go into the details of that but like app development and development one is pretty tough i know that for a fact because a mate of mine and a mate of mine done it but um it's unique you know and i think like do you just have a website no not at the moment no something not that at moment. we've we've talked about different options not just the website but like different ways like you know like shopify and stuff like that but we just can't we probably need to that would probably be a next step, like, you know, just to kind of cut out the the middleman, like, you know, and payments, the, I think payments, the worst part when you, when you're trying to get something off something, like if you're trying to buy a program, like, I don't want to go, right, can you pay me now? Do you know what I mean? I'd rather you just yeah. say, yeah, here's the link to, you just pick A, A, A B, C, and um, then we'll get that process started, like, you know, so yeah. that's probably something we need to do um, really soon. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. But it's it's not even up. It's not even up. Like the page isn't even set up a year. It'll be coming up yeah. to a year. I think during the summer. So like it's from like I think for a year, not even a year's like work that we put into it. It's it's doing well. Like and I think like this time is now a lot like where smaller coaches can can grow and find a lot of um like put out good content not just yeah. stuff that people like want to read and like there's, like there's no magic to coaching I don't think I think simple is easier yeah but I think coaches get caught up in doing like I don't know like doing yeah. something ridiculous and people would be like geez I've never heard that before he must know a lot mm. yeah and they don't there's a reason why you don't know about it yeah yeah no 100% but, no you're dead right yeah um, Especially, I, what was involved in your in your course? Did you just do any like? Was there any crossover from like gym stuff and then like science side of it? Yeah, no, there was. We did some we did some sort yeah. of strength and condition where we did like learn about your one RM and your three RM and your yeah. velocity and power and how to train like in different types of training and strength training, and speed training. But Italy didn't have a massive. We didn't have a gym, so we had an upstairs room and like all we the room had a treadmill in it like a bench press and basically a pull-up bar and that was about it like we had a lot of um we're, we worked a lot on your gait like your walking your running gait and stuff but in terms of our actual facilities there it wasn't that good you know for the likes of strength and conditioning um mm. i left in third year instead of fourth year i got to level seven instead of level eight simply because i'd set up my business and it just started going well so i was like there's no point in me staying on another year you know what um, would you what would you have got in the other year a level like, eight so sports science and health you know where that was the level okay. seven sports science and health but what happened was when i left they gave you an option in fourth year to either qualify as or in sports science and health or else sports science xp so the sports science and health was mainly lab based, lab theory based, but the sports science XP was focused on strength conditioning, performance analysis and stuff like that. Mm. Would I, do I wish I stayed on? No, not really, to be honest. Um, a lot of times I was in the college and I was kind of thinking I could be better off, say, doing a UK SCA course, like all these different strength conditioning courses and doing four or five of them. And spending twelve grand instead of just spending twelve grand over the four years for that course for just for that one degree. Yeah. And yeah. looking back yeah. at it, I was like, just look, I have a degree now, I'll leave it at that. But the annoying thing is 
No, no, like I'm delighted I have the degree and it does stand to me because it like the likes of the fundamental movement skills I learned about and early sports specialization. It's great. I've applied that to my business, but not one person has asked me to come up what I'm qualified in. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Really? If you if you provide something, you provide a service that people want, they want, they'll just not in a bad, not in a weird way, but they'll throw their child at you. Yeah, yeah, you know, like it's it's um, a funny thing. Um, yeah. So, look, I did enjoy the course, but at the same time, it's like I think other people should seriously consider maybe going and doing the likes of the UK SCA. I not I forgot them all, but the types of like Olympic weightlifting courses and stuff like this, I think they stand a lot more to you. Um, but yeah, like I did learn a bit about strength and conditioning and stuff, but like. As a sports scientist, whatever, it'd be tough for you to make a career over. You'd have to be getting into the likes of top English Premier League so it's be making a You living. couldn't stay here. You, know, you couldn't you can't stay, stay here. Ireland. You know, you just can't. Um, it's, it's crazy. I don't, I don't know what Dan's view on it is, but where we go to college, is, I think is quite, just going off what you said there, I think it gives you a, a lot more, um, especially in like the strength and condition side of it. Yeah. Um, as well as then you're like anatomy and physiology and stuff like that but like the, their modules I think Dan will agree with me the anatomy and physiology and stuff they're so boring yeah. but you, you need to do them and then yeah. when you get into the gym then you're like oh grand this is why I'm doing the good. course like, exactly yeah Um. Yeah. but I'm surprised like I'm surprised Tyler put on a course like that and didn't have a facility Um. But if someone asked me where would you recommend going to college for something like that, I would highly recommend where we go. Um, where yeah, where do you go? We go to Santa, Santa College. Right. Okay. So, so that's it's all there. Yeah. As well. Yeah. So, yeah. I dusted a course from them there the other day, two days ago, and that was on the fundamental movements for our children. They put up an online free course. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. That, but it's like I just written a book on it anyway. It was good for me to go and just to say, right, there's another certificate. It's good for people to see that I have another yeah. one. But we yeah, like it was, as well. yeah, 100%, exactly. But there was one lecturer who was in Tala who used to be in Satanta, Joe Warren. And uh, he came from there and he's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Like I really, really enjoyed like going to his lectures and he always put 100% in, he's practical. And then actually my Brazilian, one of my Brazilian jiu-jitsu coaches, Dan, used to coach on he done something with them as well but it's funny the two people that I know that lectured on in some capacity whether it was online or they provided details or something they're extremely mm. practical extremely practical you know they're not just all theory based you know yeah very important, very important. It's, it's pretty much like that as well when we go down when we go down there like spend a lot of time like you go into the classroom obviously a little bit you spend a lot of time in, in the gym especially yeah. if you're doing like a module like that but Sometimes you can, sometimes you can see. I think with lectures, they get bored, and they're just like they're just there. They just go through the motions. Same with teachers. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um, well, like in our line of work, whether it's co- coaching in any sense, since when would sitting in a classroom learning about it be more useful than actually going out and coaching? Doing it, yeah. Like there's yeah. no comparison. You know. Mm. No comparison. Yeah, at all. you get you get way more out of actually doing something um than looking at a screen or looking at a lecture point out notes. Like it's kinda going, what did I actually take in here? You know, whereas he goes, Right, we're gonna do whatever, ten minutes here and then we're just gonna go down and, and go through the practical em- element of it. Like you're gonna learn way more, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's all true. Like something as simple as a tone of your voice can make a difference in you coaching someone. You know, but you're not you're not yeah. gonna you're not gonna notice that if you're just sitting in a room learning about it, you know. It takes upon your own initiative to go and learn it. Yeah. I think that's like there's a massive difference. Like people don't realise that, you know. Sitting in your room and you're like yeah. like I know with me with sports science, as I said, I love the course and everything, but it's like if there was more practical stuff it would be way more beneficial, you know. 100%. Yeah. Would what age group do you coach? For me, two to ten. Would you ever coach higher? I wouldn't be qualified. Like personally, I, I as 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 Dan said earlier, I like to focus on my strengths. And I think that's important. And yeah. like I've coached two to five roles now for Jesus, 
how many years? Five years. So it's like you just learn what works, what doesn't work. And like I didn't learn any of that in terms of like just dealing with kids that young in college. I just did it from experience, just from having part time jobs and stuff, you know, working in different mm-hmm. clubs, different settings. So I'm able to go right. And now that I've written a book in it, thankfully people will think, right, who's the guy that coaches kids with autism or coaches kids that young? Thankfully it's me because I've written the book on it. That's one thing that's yeah. kind of made me stand out. It's given me good credibility. But like for me, coaching older people, I wouldn't mind coaching, say, 13, 14 year olds. Like, I think I'd be okay there because, like, that I'm older than them. I think that's important as a coach. I don't know why, just for yeah. me, like, I like being older. I can share experience with them, I can share some sort of knowledge. But when it comes to coaching adults, I don't think so. Simply because I haven't learned enough, I haven't done enough qualifications. Say, I, I'd happily do a PT qualification, but it's not in my business. and I know what I need to focus yeah. on, you know, there's no point drafting away. I need to hone down on the fact that I'm the kids coach. I'm the one that coaches the fundamental movement skills and coaches kids. Well That's your uniqueness, you know? Exactly. As someone said yeah. to me, it's like, you got to get a gimmick, you know, you have to have your own uniqueness, your own, basically your own brand, you know? So that's what stands out yeah. to me. I went off coaching people like you do. First of all, I, it would be false. You know, it really would be. And people would sniff it a mile away, you know. And I just, to be honest, I wouldn't have any interest in doing it. But, like, it, the thing is, it's like, just everyone, everyone should be exercising. Absolutely everyone. Like, we were saying earlier on that you see some people in gyms and, like, they walk in, say, to the real commercial gyms and you look, I, like, I'd spot some people myself and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, older people especially. Like, and they're on, like, I've seen someone on... Oh, what's the name? Like the hamstring. It's like a fall forward. Um, Nordic. It's, Nordic, it's yeah. a Nordic, but it's like you're not just like kneeling down and someone's holding your heels. It's like I can't. Remember. It's an actual like machine of some sort. But there was someone, and they were just like <laughs> the part are supposed to be falling over. They were just lying on, but like they were folded in like a V, and they're just swinging back and forth like this. <laughs> I was trying so hard not to laugh, like looking at it. But it's like that's the type of stuff that people are doing in the gym. Like it's Yeah. But, yeah. Like, that comes back to the thing there where like if you went to a commercial gym, someone's gonna stand at the desk and be like, Look at that. Look at him over there. Yes. Yeah. I Whereas if you me. if you go to somewhere like it'd probably be more expensive to more go to personal, somewhere, like, smaller. More personal. Yeah. But so, like you'll do, do it once. That. They'll, they'll do it once and they'll say, Don't ever do that again. Yeah. Like yeah. and they'll show you what you should do. But like like you were saying that everyone should try them. I done the, the CrossFit level one there, um I think it was in March. No, it would have been in February, I think. I don't know. Um and um, CrossFit has this thing, it's called like a, a sickness wellness and fitness continuum. So like it's like a curve, um, and they want the sickness is obviously people it's how like training crosses over but into daily life. So like sickness it could be ill you could have a long term illness you could just be sick wellness is then just your people who are training say an hour a day five days a week take Saturdays and Sundays off and then fitness is they going to a small percentage of people who are like they compete so like CrossFit athletes they don't want people to be in fitness they want people to be in the wellness like uh, the wellness yeah. continuum Um. Yeah. And the main aim of CrossFit isn't to ge- isn't to get athletes. It's to move people from sickness to wellness. They don't like how they don't want athletes. They just want people to be healthier. And I think like when not when they were going through that, it was just a real like it was a realization of being like they don't actually want a lot from people. They just want to make people better, make their lives better. And yeah. it makes a lot of sense. Like oh, yeah. I think mean, that's what me and Dan obviously want to do as well is just build good habits build uh build better lifestyles for people which should be i think should be the main aim of, of any coach really um unless you get someone that comes to you who was an elite athlete and says i want i need to do this um, and they're more specific, specific to you it's yeah. a little, little bit more different than they're at an elite stage um but i think most people that come to you should you should just be getting them away from that sickness stance closer to the wellness 
just for when they get older. They can yeah. fight flus for everything. Yeah. Just oh, everything. Like, yeah, it's a perfect time to talk about that at the moment, obviously, you know. Like, yeah. I've seen the highest risk factor in New York for people contracting the coronavirus was obesity. Yeah, that's a lot over there. Which yeah. is unbelievable, you know. It's, that's unbelievable <laughs> when you think about it. But know? there's people out there who have, like, they could be on death's door and they wouldn't have obesity. But someone that's all weight is going to catch coronavirus yeah. quicker. Like, it's weird, isn't it? Like, like I don't know. it's crazy. Like and obviously as you were saying there, like it's it's important if you had an athlete come to you or your average Joe who's your neighbour or something, it's important that you individualise it. Like that word is just so important. Yeah, it really is. Like people It's also important to know not everyone is at that level. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was just about to say. Exactly. Like say say if Dan came to me, I know I would probably do a bit of research. You you know Dan plays football. You'd be like, right, what do you want to get better at? Okay, this. So you'd know he's capable of a lot. His body can take on a good bit of strain. But you could get someone from down the road who just says, oh, like I'm just looking to lose a bit of weight. You're not going to give them something that I would give them. Yeah, of course not. You're just yeah. going to give them stuff to make their life easier and make them healthier. Yeah, and it comes back to people. That's exactly it. And they're just, as you said before, they're doing all these mad weird exotic techniques that people haven't seen before and because they do with them they reach a reach a wider audience and people are like oh but he does this mad thing so he he definitely knows a lot more like the base people don't realize it's the basics yeah. the one-on-ones you know that make it yeah like it sounds i know it's hard for us to say three of us who are into health and fitness and exercise and wellness and everything it's easy for us to sit here and say that it is easy to take it up to take do your one hour a day to have a, a well-balanced diet but it, like, it really is, you know, and it, it's education with people, a lot of it, you know, and if we can yeah. spread our education, it's how we do it in the best way possible. Obviously, we want to grow our businesses as well, but as you said, it's a perfect time to put out content, to go and put out good content, well-informative content, not just pictures of yourself with six-packs, but information that will actually, yeah. you know, stand out to people. But it's a lot, of, like, now is a good time for people to build them habits. Yeah. Yeah. Like we we can't go out, we can't go drinking, we can't go out for food. So why not now say, I always wanted to be able to eat, get a good balanced diet, and train an hour a day. Yep. Like people are people are working at home. Okay, so say they work nine to five, but finish work at ten past five. What are you doing? Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. Just just train. Yeah. yeah. If that not just a waste an hour, like. Yeah. And, and they probably feel better. What do you think of this whole pandemic? Do you think people will keep on training? Like after this, it. Like, no, I, I mean that like the average Joe, because I think the amount of people that are going on walks and like taking up exercise is brilliant. You know, they're really trying to hammer on the fact that, oh, if I do this hour of exercise a day, like people that haven't done it before, same when life was normal. But do you think these people will continue yeah. it on? Well, I think they they'll have to factor in that they're back to work or their kids are back to school and like the their normal routine will be back. So I do think a lot of them will fall fall out of that routine. But if they if they prepare for when they're actually back to, to normality I suppose, then they definitely can do it because like like you said, it's only an hour a day, like so yeah. Realistically like so you can definitely fit in whether it's before work or before the kids are going to school. Like there's like it's everyone has the same time every day, so like you're never too busy. Um, I definitely think they can, but I don't know whether they actually will. Like you know. Yeah, yeah, and that's like um, it's it really is unbelievable. When people say like they've no time. It's just the worst excuse ever, you know. And look, I think yeah. I do. Nothing it but time. There's nothing but time. Like you've 24 <laughs> hours in a day. There's nothing but time, and that's another thing. It's like if people are just trying to keep up their general health and fitness, or they're trying to just start from scratch like there's nothing wrong with a nine minute hit workout and you can yeah. see lots of them you know there's nothing no. wrong with that like we've all done it we've when we were younger we all went to the gym and spent two three hours as dan called them the beach muscles mm. um but like if you again going back to like a crossfit style gym or like that type of gym if you go in there for an hour you'll come out and you'll be like it's like getting hit by a bus they're like, geez, what did I just do there? 
But yeah. like them three, them extra two hours that you would have spent in the in the gym were for not like not for nothing, but people can just go in for an hour and be done and go home. Go in, take the pictures. I think that's and why, leave like, again. yeah, <laughs> like I think I think that's why a lot of them gyms like that um, have have done really well since opening up because it's like people don't have to think about what they're gonna do. We can just like, I'm going in. Whatever they have in the board, they own it. Yeah. And then I get to go yeah. home. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. and they have a laugh and they do it as well. So, yeah. Just that It's just little good. things like. Yeah, 100%. So, from both your perspectives, I'd, I'd love to get both your opinions on this. Yeah. How much do people focus on nutrition and how much on training? Um, Even though, well, I think nutrition nutrition is more is in the long run definitely more important like because like at the end of the day you can't unless you're doing a ridiculous amount of training and um, you can't really out train out yeah out train a bad diet like you know um, and I think when they say 70% nutrition 30% training it, it is a lot of the time right like you know so you see a person who's in good condition most of the time that it's due to their diet what they eat like you know obviously there's a few people that have very good genetics and um, that can get away with it but like you can go to the gym and go for your hour but if you're what you're eating and what you're putting in your mouth isn't the right stuff then like you're kind of out doing your work you know yeah 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 i think so. um yeah. i would be of the same uh like ideas as that dave would have seen me when i was in school i wasn't the biggest kid i'm not saying i'm the biggest now but when you start eating right you, that's when you start to see like like changes whereas like for lunch I would have like a ham and cheese sandwich and then like a cookie but now you wouldn't like you would never say oh, I'll have a ham and cheese sandwich and um, and for me like that was kind of the real the real kind of like wake up call where I was like Jesus nutrition actually does play a huge part in in what you do like again like Dan said and you can train all you want, but you're never gonna try out train a bad diet. Never. I'm yeah, I'm so guilty of it. Like oh, I am never. so guilty of it. Like I will religiously do my hours workout with a day where like prior to this virus it would have been like jujitsu or football or in the gym on down the car little bend ones. But like I'm terrible for my diet. Like I get hounded for off my mates. But it's like I just need to focus on that now and it's a good time to focus on it because I've nothing else to be doing you know and I'm trying my very best but I think like yeah people don't realise how important nutrition is you know they really don't don't realise like it's crazy but they like, just think by doing you the can hours. do a four year course yeah like in college to be a nutritionist like there's a lot behind it yep yeah and it can be scary when you google something and it comes up and you're like Jeez, what is that like? Yep. Like, like, so much that goes I mean, into. It just intimidates people, and they're like, "Ah, oh, I'll be grand. Like, I'll just have a chicken fillet and a bit of rice." Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred percent. But, but like, like, I I guarantee you, right? There's plenty of people out there who don't eat enough but think they eat enough. I, I mm. like you need to kind of figure out like a little balance on how to when you track for a while. You get to know, like you know. When you track for a while, you get you get to know you're like, all right, okay, like that's so many grams and that's so whatever. But it's probably so many people out there that are like, oh, I'm eating loads, but they're not. Mm. Yeah, we see it all the time. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So, yeah, hundred percent. Like, I for me, I thought someone said to me, which was a good rule, it's like eat it if it grows out in the ground, or hangs off a tree, or if it has f- four legs, basically. Yeah, like natural stuff like yeah. not like the amount i'm i'm just being honest the amount of bread i and cereals just kills me off like and i it's just so convenient you know it's so convenient to wake up and have two slices of toast and as you said to make a ham sandwich maybe in the afternoon and then to make whatever spaghetti bone lays in the evening like god knows how much like carbs you have to take in complex carbs you have to take in there you know it's just so easy for people to do that yeah. you know and that's people just want a quick fix yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, no, that that was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, I enjoyed that chat now. So your app, can you find it on iPhone, like on the Apple Store? It's easy. Like 
we need to add you onto the app so you look it up and it, it won't come up. Um, okay. So if anyone isn't looking to get involved, email our emails, text us individually, uh, text the page, and then we can send you the link then to get you set up. Um, yeah. And then you basically just follow the link, activate your account, and then there you go. So the Instagram page is you to us. So you to us. Us, us to you. Us to you. Well, us to you. So US number two and then fitness. Super. Super. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. Thanks very much. I'll put your, no, no, put Thanks your, for for your profile in the in the description. All right, no, but I'll tell that's thank you very much. Go on. See you later. Thank you. Right. See you later.